So here is the vision test utility uh, to measure the uh, visual acuity of a display. Of course, right now I'm not running it in a headset, but on a normal desktop monitor, which is easier to film, obviously, and easier to show the operation. And as it turns out, you can even use this to measure the visual acuity of a desktop display, um, if it's properly calibrated. The way it works is that uh, you have this uh, vision test panel over here, where we are showing three rows of optotypes, big, middle, and small. The small ones are really tiny down here. Uh, and the optotypes that chose for this are ones uh, so-called the Landolt C. It's a ring that has a particular size uh, and has a gap that can be in one of eight directions, to the right, to the top right, to the top, and so forth. Um, and you have to tell for the active row of optotypes, which is the one in the middle, uh, which direction the gap is facing. It turns out that that's a reliable way of doing it. Um, it's better than using letters because you don't you necessarily have to be able to read. Uh, and it's, uh, it's better than using those E rotated e test because it has eight possible directions as opposed to just four. Uh, anyway, so the idea is now that uh, you are supposed to tell the gap position of the central optotype, the middle one in the middle row, indicated by those uh, by that crosshair there. And then in the confirmation dialog, you just click on uh, whatever orientation you see, and then the system will guide you through the vision test. If you confirm one, then that row will shift one to the left, and you just keep clicking it until the system believes you that you can see these optotypes or not and we'll then move on to the next size. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Um, the initial test, you're seeing that I'm using a very large size at the top and then a very small one at the bottom, so the first one should be easy. And now the system detected that I was done with that row. Uh, so now because I clearly detected those optotypes reliably, it's going to the next smaller size. And here things are getting a little bit more difficult, um, but I think I can still do it and I accidentally made a mistake. I identified the optotype that is the leftmost in that row. Of course, you have to look for the middle one, which is also in black, unlike the other ones which are in gray. But I clearly can't follow my own instructions, so I have to make up for it. But apparently I succeeded, because we are going yet again to the smaller scale. And at this point, it's getting really borderline. Um, I should mention that the monitor from which I'm doing this is a 4K 28-inch display. And my eyes are right now approximately well, actually, I measured it. There are 31 and a half inches in front of it. Uh, I put all of that into the VR rendering engine. So what I'm seeing here is the appropriate size of a vision test chart that is 20 feet away from the viewer. Um, that's, of course, where the 20 over something in the 2020 vision comes from, that the test chart is that far away. And I'm just noticing I can't talk and do it at the same time. So I'm just going to shut up uh, and identify optotypes until something interesting happens. Of course, in the video, you're probably not going to see anything because YouTube is going to compress the hell out of this. But uh, take my word for it, these optotypes are randomly distributed and I do not know what direction they are facing. Oh, okay, I finished another row and I, and I can't even tell anymore if it just got smaller or bigger, so I do not know if I succeeded in that row or if I failed. But the idea is you don't have to know, you just carry on doing this and at some point the system will figure out that it has tasked you enough and then it will, oops, that was very quick, I think I got them all wrong, and then it will show you the result. Okay, so these are getting really difficult to tell apart. I think they're getting smaller. I should mention that uh, I said this is a 4K monitor, but the window size right now is only 1920 by 1080 because I wanted to record this into YouTube without any scaling. Uh, so the window that in which I'm doing it here is actually only filling a quarter of my screen, but that's okay because, like I said, due to the calibration, the size of these optotypes correspond exactly, uh, well, up to how closely I can, how accurately I can measure my eye position respectively to the screen, uh, what you would see if you were looking, in terms of angular coverage, of course, not in terms of optical focus, what you would be seeing in a real vision test at your optometrist's office. Okay, I'm not really doing up. Oh, okay, got another one. I'm not really doing so well. This is getting very hard, and these optotypes are getting smaller and smaller. I should also mention that yes, the window is 1920 by 1080, um, but I cranked up the multi sampling level in OpenGL all the way to the max. I'm running this as a 16x multi sampling, so it is quite a bit clearer than it would be without multi sampling. I do not want to give away the results of the test. 
while I'm doing it. I'm going to I want you to see it for yourselves. But it turned out that uh, turning on multi sampling made a measurable but very small, surprisingly small, I gotta say, difference uh, in the visual acuity I could achieve with that. Um, the other thing I should probably mention is that uh, with this monitor resolution and size and distance from which I'm looking at it, the visual acuity I'm getting here is probably evenly limited by the screen resolution and by my eyes actual visual acuity. Uh, I am nearsighted, I do wear corrective lenses, uh, but this is, let's just say the limit here is most probably just as well the limit of the monitor as it is my own, meaning in other words for me this particular monitor from a typical viewing distance uh, has retinal resolution. Okay, I finished another one. These are getting really tiny. Okay, I can't make any sense out of this one. I'm now mostly guessing and the system will detect that and will tell me to cut that out. Okay, technically what I'm doing here is a binary search. Um, I start from a very large and a very small optotype size. Uh, those two that we had initially corresponded to 2100 and 2010 vision, which I figured would be a reasonable bracket around not the visual acuity of the population, but the visual acuity you can expect in, in current generation headsets uh, or high resolution monitors. And then the system makes the active line in the middle, the geometric mean between those two extremes. So the initial uh, test I was doing was at uh, 2040 vision, give or take. Uh, and then if you can distinguish those, it will just make the middle row the bottom row and insert a new middle row, you know the drill. So it will very quickly converge to the point where you can just barely not distinguish the optotypes anymore. Another one, okay, this is getting ridiculous. These are really small now. Oh, I got to blink a lot in order to make any sense of this. Uh, the system will adapt how long it shows you a particular row to how well you're doing. So if you're identifying like five in a row, uh, then you're done. If you're misidentifying five in a row, you're also done. Um, and uh, if you make some mistakes but get some right, then the system will keep going uh, until, uh, until it makes a decision. Okay, so now we're done. The system determined that this is about as good as it gets. It nailed down my visual acuity to uh, one integer denominator and it tells me minus 20 over 14 which means two things for one that is actually what my visual acuity is supposed to be and the other thing is it is repeatable i've now done this for the fifth time and come up with the exact same result every time um, so that is a, a good result uh, and i did tease initially uh, that turning on multi-sampling did make a difference and indeed if i turn multi-sampling off i'm losing exactly one denominator uh, at that point, the visual acuity can get us 20 over 15. So that's it. Uh, you can do the same thing in a headset. Um, and then just by doing it a bunch of times with a bunch of different people, you can measure what the visual acuity is. I haven't done that yet, um, but obviously I will record the results and then post them uh, in the blog article. All right, thank you very much.